that, they have us ready to go. We're gonna keep moving at a brisk pace. I am so pleased to be with you today. Thanks so much for having, having us here at um, ASU GSV. I just love this summit. I always leave with so many ideas, uh, very content-rich uh, present, um, presentations, which I really appreciate. So I am actually worked with Liz, your last presenter for the past five years. I'm doing exceptional work at Fremont, and really Liz is just a tremendous educational leader, and I'm so pleased to had a chance to hear from her. I'm the new superintendent at Greenwich Public Schools in Greenwich, Connecticut, and in my first walk around the district, I probably had 25 innovative practices that I saw, but I thought I would, you know, I had limited time, so I thought in a limited amount of time, I could give you little snippets, and hopefully you'll stay in touch with me. So you can reach me at Dr. Jill Gilday, um, GPS as my Twitter handle, or you can reach the Innovation Lab, which I'm going to talk about as the top innovation, at uh, their blog, which is ghsinnovationlabs.com. So you can take a look at that. And we will go ahead and get started. How do we make amazing systemic? As we reimagine our schools, we know that new formed education and transformation is possible. Look at that, I'm ahead of the slide deck. That's because I have to click it, right? I'm used to it being timed. The vision of the, oh, there we go. The vision of the graduate at Greenwich Public Schools truly brands the vision of whole child approach to academic, personal, and interpersonal capacities. This 10-year-old concept at Greenwich coalesces the community around its aspirational goals for our public schools and provides our return on instruction metrics to an engaged stakeholder community. Healthy start time, there we go. Healthy start time takes into account the start and end of the school day aligned to adolescent sleep patterns. Sleep time is a transactional or start time shift, is a transactional shift in transformative times. I really envision more of a flexible start end time for our students and schools, almost a shift model, but we're not quite there as a community yet. So we've shifted an hour and we're you know, manipulating and maneuvering that. Really challenging at the end of the day, to be honest with you, with athletics and travel, but we are, you know, we're addressing that. So start time is a transactional shift in transformative times, but as a shift in practice, healthy start time is focused on student well-being, promotes a reimagined or redesigned school day, and it aligns with the American Academy of Pediatric Sleep Findings. If we're going to reimagine the school day, I don't know where to click, there we go. If we're going to reimagine the school day, we'll also redesign the look and feel of the learning studio, which used to be called a classroom. And we do this to promote the 21st century skills that you actually heard Liz talk about. Creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking are hallmarks of the future of learning. Walking through our halls, you'll find rotation stations, menus and playlists of must-dos and can-dos, and student agency and ownership of projects, assessments, and learning work. Aligning our policies, our Greenwich Public Schools this year adopt a mastery-based progression policy to support learner-centered and future future-focused learning environments, preparing us for updated graduation requirements from the state and supporting learners at each area of their learning trajectory and to best prepare them for college career and life-ready outcomes that will not be defined solely by seat time. Moving from the 100,000 foot to the one foot level, we look at the personal learner profile. This is a visual display of student progress aligned to the vision of the graduate that I spoke about earlier, and it highlights those capacities of the learner beyond just an academic transcript. So you can find information about the student's interests, aspirations, successes, um, be it in or out of the school day. Factors that are aligned to school success from attendance to participation are also included on this learner profile. It does include assessment data, 
and it just demonstrates to our families and our stakeholders that return on instruction metric. An example of project-based learning in our schools is the Steminar module. So at our middle schools, we are a next-gen science district, or uh, we've adopted this uh, curriculum and developed units that are really quite amazing. Um, this, uh, these photos um, demonstrate some middle school learners, but we also see our fifth grade students doing an engineering innovation unit where the kids are describing an innovation that they've created and they make a prototype of this, all scaled, and then they sell this idea, their product, their innovation to younger children. So they work with communication skills and styles, they work with all the engineering principles of designing an innovative product, and then they sell this to younger students. Our younger students cannot wait to get to that unit of study. So it's really fun to see how the kids engage and uh, bring their creativity and their entrepreneurism to the classroom. Uh, the type of interdisciplinary courses that we offer provide next-gen um, st science standards for the kids and really brings this to life for middle-level learners. In Greenwich, we are very fortunate to have comprehensive partnerships with nonprofits and our overall town department structure, coalescing community resources around the needs of our, our students, including early achievement gap solutions, provide supportive services that we could not do on our own. Our dynamic digital learning environment provides a device per student to access learning resources for all students K-12 and has been in place for five years. With device costs decreasing, we're hopeful that this key strategy will continue in the district and we also do permit BYOD for our high school students. Um, the dynamic, dynamic digital learning environment is much more than simply accessing curriculum but also creating innovative practice. A growth mindset supporting learner progression and learner growth underlies each of the innovative practices. The willingness to learn and grow throughout the system is a key to current and future success. Mindfulness practice and social emotional learning are key strategies to support our learners. Our Greenwich Public Schools personalized professional learning model is scalable and replicable supports learner or teacher growth and development aligned to evaluation standards. Our personalized learning mathematics pilot has been launched across our elementary schools with educators opting into this launch. The station rotation model provides students with opportunities to close skill gaps as well as accelerate their learner pathway. Um, this we will be able to publish a white paper on. And finally, the number one or top innovative practice I started with, it's the Innovation Lab, bringing tomorrow's school to life today. Our prototype high school model, the Innovation Lab, provides an actual school within a school. It's a future-ready, next-gen learning model that incorporates STEM, humanities, and a design block for our learners who work together in a cohort model through their grades, uh, 9 through 12, and really have had just tremendous success with that model. The kids are going to all kinds of universities um, to really um, extend their research and their study. The cohort gains have been tremendous, creates a tremendous uh, condition for success, and truly realizes 21st century skills. It's an absolutely transformational program that's open to visitors from across the US. Thank you so much for your time.